Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss the structure, structure activity relationship, mechanism of action, and classifications of another beta lactam class, which is cephalosporins. Let's begin with the mechanism of action. As a typical beta lactam, cephalosporins work by inhibiting the cell wall formation by binding to penicillin binding protein or the transpeptidase. This binding inhibits the enzyme from cross-linking the peptidoglycan monomers, which result in weak and fragile cell wall. So as you can see here, this enzyme link these two peptidoglycan chains to form ridged cell wall. Our drugs, cephalosporins, inhibit the action of this enzyme, resulting in weak cell wall in which the peptidoglycan chains are not interlinked by peptide linkage. So we can say in general, cephalosporins share the same mechanism of action with penicillins and other beta-lactams. Then what makes it distinguishable from other beta-lactam antibiotic? To find out, we need to take a look at their structure. The structure of cephalosporin has similarities to that of penicillin in that it has a bicyclic system containing four-membered beta-lactam ring. But this time, the beta-lactam ring is fused to six-membered dihydrothiazine. So dihydrothiazine ring. Also, you can see that there is two sites of variation now. First, at the carbon number three within the dihydrothiazine ring, and second is within the acyl side chain. It is preferred to have good leaving group at side chain number one to have better activity of cephalosporins. So once this leaving a group leaves the structure, cephalosporin will be able to fit the transpeptidase active site perfectly. Nevertheless, cephalosporins are derived from the same biosynthetic precursors as penicillin, which are cysteine and valine. The seven amino cephalosporanic acid or seven ACA can be modified by the addition of different side chains at R number one and R two to create a whole family of cephalosporins through semi-synthetic processes. These cephalosporins are generally classified as five generations. The first generation include cephalothin, cephaloridine, cephalixin, and cephazoline. In general, these agents have a lower activity than penicillin, but they have a better range of activity. Secondly, we have cefamycin and cefoxetin. These two drugs show broader spectrum of activity than the most of first generation cephalosporins, and this is due to the greater resistance to the beta-lactamase. The same enzyme that we seen in penicillin deactivation. It also deactivates cephalosporins through ring opening reaction in the beta lactam. 
Third generation include ceftazoxime, ceftriaxone, ceftazidime, and cefotaxime. The third generation have greater activity against gram-negative bacteria. This can be explained by the enhanced penetration of these drugs through the LPS, the outer layer of the gram-negative cell wall, which is mostly impermeable to polar drugs. Fourth generation, we have cefipim and cefpirum. The unique features of these drugs is the good affinity for transpeptidase, the target enzyme or the penicillin binding protein, and the low affinity to variety of beta lactamases, the degrading enzymes. Finally, we have the fifth generation. They have extended spectrum of activity against gram-positive bacteria, including MRSA, which is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, as well as multi-drug-resistant Streptococcus pneumonia, so MDRSP. This leads us to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.